Hey there, welcome back. So, now we are actually done with the um, sort of basics of assembly language. Up until now, we have focused on uh, how assembly language works itself. Uh, so, we're not going to be doing a lot of that going forward. There might be some small, you know, some here and there, and we'll take a look at some mnemonics or whatever, but uh, um, mainly, going forward from now, we're going to focus on making our game. So, here I am, with blank sheets. I don't have anything right now. Where do I start? Well, I like to do things simple, so I'll just start by making a new folder. And this game is called Joe's Crazy Adventure. I'm just going to call my folder Joe's Adventure. All right. That's the first step, right? So, in my uh, folder right now, I don't have anything. So, what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to start by making my main file. So, I open my Sublime, and since I like to keep things tidy, I'm going to make a heading for this. So, I'll say, uh, Joe, let's see, Joe's Crazy Adventure, like that. So, just so that we're tidy, have a little heading like that. And I just write basic upstart2 main. Alright, now I'm just going to save my file here. I'm going to save it here in my Joe's Adventure folder as main.asm. Alright, so I'm, I just made my first file in my project. So, what do I do next? Well, what I like to do is I like to plan things ahead. Now, I've done this a few times, so I I don't have to do too much planning or, or math or anything like that. But I'm going to start by making my memory map. Now, we've seen that before. But I'm just quickly going to make a new file. So I'll copy my label, make a new file, and I'm going to change this heading to memory map, like that. And then I'll just say dot label. So now I'm just going to start making some constants for my memory map here. And I like to start at the lowest address, <coughs> lowest memory address that I will be using. And I just go up like that. Again, I think we'll see, we have seen that before. Zero page address and uh, I'll just write 0, 0, 020. Now um, I like to start uh, uh, my zero page and um, start using zero page from address 20. Now let me just say a quick uh, word about that is is the you know the Commodore 64 is filled with a lot of stuff when you start your computer and there are tons of stuff in zero page as well. Now most of, or yeah, I think most of that stuff has to do with basic. So program <coughs> programming in basic. And we're not going to be using basic, so we don't have to worry about that. So what addresses can we use in zero page? Are there any free addresses? Well, there are not too many free addresses, but since we're not using basic, we can use a large part of zero page for our project. Now, why address 20? Well, again, this is a little bit trial and error, you know, talking to other people, stuff like that. And I have found that memory address 20, so address 20 in zero page, starting from that address seems to work just fine. I have had a ton of uh, addresses after 20, 21, 22, 20, 23, and so on. Uh, and I haven't had any issue. So I'm just going to start my zero page at 20, filling in zero page uh, variables, if we, if we can call it that, from address 20 going up. So I just wanted to mention that. So I start by uh, giving <coughs> a memory address for zero page, then I say um, uh, my game, uh, yeah, game code address. And that's going to be at 0810. So, 
again, we've seen this kind of thing before. Um, let me just do one more actually. So I'm gonna say label variables address like that. And I'm gonna put my variables at address C100. So I just save. Now obviously I would have a lot more here. Variables, I need to say where my tables uh, are going to be and sprites and again, we've seen that before. But I'm gonna save my memory map now. Now in my Joe's adventure folder, I'm gonna make a new folder. And I'm just gonna call that system. In my system folder, I'm gonna save this file, memory map file, <coughs> and I'm just gonna call it memory map like that. So now my uh, project folder looks like this. I have my main file and I have this new system folder where I have put my memory map. So uh, let's say that I have finished making my memory map file now. So what I do now, now uh, let's come back to this zero page. But now I start taking every line in my memory map memory map file here just copying this label remember these labels are memory addresses so just copy this label go back to my main file and here I say asterisk equal sign and that label so in this case remember this is memory address 0810 and uh, just to um, we've only we've seen this before by writing some sort of comment or label uh, behind here uh, like game code it's gonna come in really handy when we use the noise kick assembler memory viewer that we have looked at before so I'll just write um, the first thing in here except this one so I take my game code and here I say um, Hashtag import and I'm gonna say includes game code.asm. Now, right now, I don't have this is the folder, right? I don't have a folder called includes. I don't have a file called game code asm. Well, maybe it's a good idea that I make those now. So I'm gonna take this includes name, folder name. And I'm actually going to make that folder now. So I just make a new folder with the name includes. So now at least I have this folder. But I really should make this game code file as well. So once again, I'm just going to copy this heading, make a new file, and I'm actually just going to call this file game code. Now, what names you use, what terms you use it's really up to you right you just call things whatever makes the most sense to you now this game code is just this main game code that i wear i just call it game code because this is a start of all this game code stuff so anyway now i need to save my game code file and i need to save it in includes i just decided that that makes the most sense to me so game code.asm in includes here. So now this is actually, uh, this makes sense. I actually have a file called game code.asm in a folder called includes. But don't forget, this is my main.asm file, the, the very main, main, main file, you know, the, the actual start of this whole thing because of my basic upstart 2 here. So don't forget this main. This says that the, I need a label called main because that's the absolute start of this whole thing. So right now I don't have any main. So I need to go in my game code file and say main in here. So that now this main is what this is pointing at. Basic upstart 2, start this whole thing at main. All right, that's here in my game code.asm file. And since I'm importing it here at the very beginning, 
uh, at memory address 0, 8, 10. Then this is, makes perfect sense. This, what I did right here, is basically just doing this. So that's what I'm actually doing now. Uh, and also, <clears throat> I've also specified that this has to start at memory address 0, 8, 10 which should make sense to us at this point. So, um, I do that. Uh, this is my game code file. And actually in my game code file, uh, I also like to have something called game setup. So, uh, main here, that's going to be uh, the, the main start of this entire thing. So here I like to set up um, so everything that has to do with the system, let's call it that. So setting um, background color, default background colors, uh, doing all the stuff in the screen setup, whatever. I like to do all those things right in the main here. Then here under game setup, uh, maybe I want to initialize the player, or maybe I want to to set some values that 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 are important for my game, or whatever. Whatever needs to be done at the very beginning of the game. I like to do that here. And then under here I have something called game loop. Which is just a game loop like that. So I like to start my game code file like this. So already from the beginning I have a certain structure. So the main absolute start, start of the game. And this is where the main uh, game is going to happen. Just, everything is just going to be in a big loop like that. So that's my game code.asm. That's what I put here at the beginning. Then I just follow my memory map one after the other. So now the variables address is the next thing. So I'll just write asterisk equal sign paste in variables address and I write variable vari variables like that and now also I need to do, um, hashtag import includes variables like that now once again I don't have this file now I do have this includes folder but I don't have this variables file so I'm just going to make that right now. So I'll just take the label here, copy that and make a new file and call this file. Uh, I mean, give it a heading variables like that. And I'm just going to save this file in the includes folder because that's that what uh, makes the most sense to me right now. So I make a file called variables.asm, place it in the includes folder and save it. So now this is true as well. In my includes folder I have a game code.asm, I have a variables.asm. Uh, which basically means that I should be able to run my code now. Oh whoops, <laughs> yeah. I got an error message. Um, so what's going on now? What? Why did I get that? Well, I forgot one thing. I uh, imported my game code and variables, but I did not include my memory map file. I, my memory map file also needs to be included because right now the assembler says, what game code address? I don't know about anything called game code address, the label I used here. Oh yeah, I need to tell the assembler about that, about this file. So what I do now, it doesn't really matter where you put this because again, this is sort of a constant file and, and uh, it's not going to take up any space, but the assembler needs to know about this. So I'm just going to put it up here just to keep things tidy. So without specifying any memory address, because as I said, this is not going to take up any space. So I just put it up here and I say import 
and I put this memory map file in the system folder. So I'm just going to say system memory map.asm. So by doing that, I actually did um, actually did this now, right? So it's the same as pasting in my memory map file in here. That's what I'm doing here, right? So now the assembler knows about this. So when I run this file now, we should be okay. Uh, but of course, uh, I don't have any logic going on in my code. I just have a, an empty game loop going over and over. So nothing's going, hap going to happen, of course. But it's kind of nice to see that um, uh, I can actually run my setup. Uh, so if I wanted to test just to actually see do I really have my game code there? Does it really work? Then I could do something simple that we've seen before like for example INC D020 increase the border color that weird pattern thing So now that's in my game code and if I run my main.asm file now we can see that it's actually working. So our setup so far is working just fine. I'm gonna remove this border color thing. So um, this is just a nice way to uh, start your project. Start off being really tidy from the very beginning. Because if you start with a messy uh, setup, messy code, messy folder structure, then you're gonna have a really lousy time uh, with your programming project. And as, uh, uh, the more time goes on, the longer you get in <coughs> into your project, the worse this is going to be. So the more chaos you have, the less fun you're going to have with this project. But if you do it this way, set up everything right from the start. Uh, when I say right, but uh, in a way that makes sense to you, so you feel that you have complete control over everything. You know where everything's going to be into memory. You have this nice structure. You know where you can find your files and whatever. And something like this, the variables. So if I go back to my variables here. Now, right now it's empty. I could, if I wanted to, uh, start to write everything, all my variables in this file. And that will, would work just fine, right? Yeah, we, we're just including this file right here. But as you know, as I've showed you before, I like to include just one more layer into this, just because um, I like to be super tidy. So um, what I like to do is I like to have something like, um, if I write import, uh, let's see here, variables, um, let's say temp variables like that. So uh, temp variables, it can be nice to have temporary variables um, in your game or in your code. So now I have said import from the folder variables, the file called temp variables.asm. Well, if we go back to my folder now, I don't have a folder called variables. So I'm going to have to make a folder called variables, variables like that. Then I also, of course, need to make this temp variables.asm file. So once again, I just copy the heading, make a new file and say temp variables. And here I just start writing temp, just a label for my variable and I say byte zero. This is a variable, it's just gonna be one byte and it's gonna have a starting address of zero. But I like to have several temp variables because maybe maybe I'm going to do some complex calculations. So I like to do something like this where I have one just called temp, then I have temp one, two, three, four, temp x, temp y, temp x plus, and y plus. So this is actually how I 
would set up my temp variables file, my temporary variables. First of all, let me save this file in the variables folder. And I'm just going to call this file temp variables like that. So now if I go back to my variables folder, sorry, my variables file here, the one called variables.asm. Now this makes sense. Import from the folder variables a file called temp variables.asm. Well, I have made this folder and I just made this file as well, temp variables, right here. So, um, just a, a quick uh, comment <coughs> on uh, some of these things, right? So here I have uh, two variables, one called temp x, one called temp y. Now sometimes, now we, we looked at the stack a, a little while back, and we, we saw that I used, um, let's see here, I did something like this, transfer x to a, and then I said push a to, uh, to the stack. Then I said transfer, no, uh, pull, a transfer a to x so that's how I did things um, whatever uh, this is how I did it um, just to, to preserve my x register transfer x to a put that into the stack do something in here concerning the x register and when that's done pull from the stack and put that back into the x register so that the x, um, the value of x, would be the same up here as <coughs> as uh, down here. That's what what uh, that's the reason why I did this right, using the stack like that because I'm going to mess a little bit with x here in the middle. Now, what I can do, instead of transferring x to a, push a, I could do something like this. I could use my temp variables instead. So I could use my temp x here. This is a variable now, so I can use it for whatever I want. So instead of saying transfer x to a, push a, I could just say store x into temp x instead of pulling from the stack, transferring a to x, I could say load x with temp x. And this would give me the same uh, result. As long as I'm sure that I'm not messing with the variable temp x in here. As long as I'm sure that this is just going to be used to temporarily store my x register. So the x is five up here. Then I get to here, it says store x into the variable temp x. All right, so I store x into the variable temp x. Then I get down here and I load x with 45 because I'm gonna do something, whatever, maybe a loop or something. Now x, of course, is corrupted here. But it doesn't matter because when I get down here, I say load x with temp x and that, I just stored it up here. So it was five, so I put five into here. And when I load x with whatever is in temp x, it's still going to be five. So I'm gonna get the same result. So why would I do it this way instead of using the stack like uh, I showed you? Well, this is uh, a little bit faster. So instead of, of uh, saying transfer x to a, push a to the stack, or uh, here, pull from the stack, transfer a to x. We can see that this is uh, just one mnemonic, these are two. So same down here, one mnemonic and two. So if you know what you're doing, if you know that this variable is just going to be used for uh, temporarily, very quickly storing the, the x register, then you can do it this way. But as I said, you have to be very sure that you're not going to be messing with the temp x variable in here for whatever reason because that's going to mess things up but as long as you know what you're doing 
this is a perfectly fine way of doing it. And if you need to increase a little bit of speed in your code, then this could be a way to go. All right, that's what that was the temp uh, variables. But let's get back to this now. Uh, so now I have a file with temp variables. I've included my temp variables uh, file. Now this file is just going to be temp variables. So I included that here, variables temp variables.asm. So now that file in there is in there. Then I could um, make another uh, variables file and I say import variables, um, you know, whatever, maybe player variables, whatever it should be. Maybe have a file with some sort of variables that has to do with, just has to do with the player. Then I would have to make a new file called player.asm and put it in here, in my variables.asm file. Now, this file now is now here. So the main variables file is here. That's the one that I put here uh, under my variables uh, address. So one of the benefits of doing it this way is that let's say at some point in your project, you say that, whoa, dang it. I need to move my variables. It doesn't work out uh, having them here. Maybe, maybe this file grew so big that I actually need this space. Well, it's not really a huge issue when you do it this way. Because now we can just go back to my memory map and I say, oh, this is too big. All right, no problem. How about if we move my variables all the way up to one, th uh, let's see here, 1000 now. Oh, that's no problem. We do it that way. We save that file. And now all my variables start at address 1000 now. So now if this, uh, this file uh, got too big now, so I needed some extra space, I just moved my variables to, let's see here, to 1000 instead. So move them up a little bit in memory. And I, whatever, uh, yeah, I just did one thing now. I changed this number from 0, C100 to 1000. So just by doing that, I moved all my variables because I have everything into the, in this file, variables.asm. So I don't have to move separate variables from this place, this place. So I don't have to do that. I don't even have to move files around or anything because everything, all my variables are in this, uh, yeah, in this file. So here I have some, some uh, specific variables files, but all those are in the one file called variables.asm. And that file is uh, right below the starting address for variables. And starting address for variables, that's defined here in my memory map. So just by changing this number, simply just changing this little number, I actually made that change. So hopefully you can see that uh, just by doing it tidy like this, then uh, it becomes much easier to do changes like that to your project. So you can move stuff around much more easily uh, if you do it very tidy like this, because in this case with variables, I just have that one file and I need to place it wherever I want in memory. And since I have this label containing my start address for variables, this becomes a really, really easy. So I can move stuff around very easily. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, well, that's uh, the, the very start of how I would do it. Now, I started by saying variables here. What I, um, the, but I, the very first thing that I do after creating this main.asm file and this game code file, 
the very first thing I do, and actually this as well. So I made my I make my main.asm, game code.asm, and memory map.asm. I make those three files. But in this case, I started by making variables. In reality, I would start by making constants first. Why? Well, because for the most part, I know. Uh, well, I don't know all my constants, but I know a lot of constants that I want. Some constants that I use for every project. What's that? Well, it's a lot of addresses from this web page, the Commodore 64 memory map. So, for example, I usually have a constant for this memory address, 0001, called the processor port. So I would make a constant called processor port with this memory address. But maybe something more familiar to us, this memory address is one that I use every single time, D018, memory setup register. I'm definite, definitely going to make a, a a label for that or constant for that one and same thing for uh, let's see here the border color d020 i'm going to be working with the border color d021 background color so i make constants based on a lot of addresses uh, from this web page so if you're not sure uh, now if you can't remember all of these memory addresses at the start uh, then just go to this uh, memory map, this sorry, this web page, and scroll through it. You probably should do that anyway because it's a good idea to get familiar with these a lot of these memory addresses. Addresses, and in fact, you can learn a lot just by studying this. Uh, so I do it that way, and then I end up with some something like this. So here we can see that I've. Uh, made a separate file for my screen constants. So I just have a heading set screen constants. The file is called screenconstants.asm. And here you can see screen RAM address 0400. That should be familiar to us. Screen color RAM uh, D1800. Screen control 1, screen control 2, and so on. So now when I make this, and include it in my project. You know, we need to include everything in our project. And with my constants, I do it the same way as with my variables. I have one file called constants.asm. Let's see if we can take a look at that. So I have constants.asm, which includes all my constants. For example, screen constants. And that one, is included here. So I have my main constants file here uh, together with, for example, my memory map here. Because, like I said before, none of these files is going to take up any space in memory. So I just put them at the very top like that. But um, I start by making uh, a lot of files like this, and mainly what they are, they are just uh, handy things where I use my, uh, later in the code, I just use these labels instead of uh, using these memory addresses. So for you uh, in the beginning, this can be super handy because if you find it hard to remember a ton of different memory addresses, then maybe it's easier to remember screen border color instead of remembering D020 in remembering screen memory setup instead of remembering D018, for example. So it can be a good idea to make a lot of these uh, constant files and maybe also a good idea to do it like I do it here, have a separate category for every of these constant files. Or like for the variables, have a, a separate um, category or theme, if you will, for every one of those files. Again, this keeping it tidy thing. So actually, um, when I start my projects, I know uh, what I'm going to do. I know what I need. 
So I actually just start making uh, folders like this. So uh, uh, I've uh, made one for variables and I make one for constants. Uh, I also make one for tables, macros, and the, 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 the folders that I know that I'm going to need. Now, I showed you this before, but I also make two folders uh, specifically for my charpad project files and SpritePad project files. And like I said before, when I make that folder, I start by this exc exclamation mark at the beginning. And then I say charpad files. That's going to bring my folder at the very beginning. And again, exclamation mark and sprite pad files. So those two folders will come here at the very beginning. Uh, so uh, what I also want to show you, now this is very handy when I'm using the, my Mac um, because it, um, my Mac file viewer can uh, display things in tabs. Now right now I don't think Windows has that. I've heard uh, talk about it that it's going to come uh, to Windows File Explorer, Explorer in Windows 11. But as far as I know, that's just uh, at the beta stage right now. But anyway, what I'm talking about now is I like to do it like this. So here in my main folder, I just keep my main folder here. But then I can start a new tab like this and go into my folder. And for example, maybe let's say I have my lie libraries folder here. So open my libraries folder and then I open a new tab in the folder and then my variables. And I like to just keep the different folders like this. So let me do one more. So let me do the uh, includes folder for example. So by keeping the different uh, tabs open like this I can very easily switch between what I need. Okay, now I'm going to work at some variables. I'm looking here what variables I have. And uh, maybe I just made a new file here in my variables folder. But then I need to go to includes, variables, and I need to write whatever that uh, file was. So maybe it was uh, room variables. Yeah, whatever. So just a, a little trick uh, to, to easily keep track of the different things, making the workflow much better. So as I said, this is a feature of Mac OS, but I think it's coming to Windows pretty soon, this tab thing. And there are probably custom applications to do that as well. But it's just a, a convenience, of course. Now for Charpad itself, as we've seen before, I just start by opening the um, default. Let's see here, the, from the, my charpad folder, I open the examples folder, fonts, system, RAM, uppercase, and I get this one. We've seen this before. And I changed to, uh, because I want the multicolor in this one, so I changed to multicolor. I make sure that I go from per project to per chart and I also like to keep uh, to draw using tile sets so I'm going to do yes for that and I like to have two by two now one of the nice things uh, about using tiles in in charpad is that it's going to take up um, one complete screen like this it's going to take up less space because if we now are using uh, uh, let's change this so something like that I guess all right anyway so if we would uh, uh, save a room like this then it would take a up a lot more uh, space in memory because if we need to save this room now it's 40 uh, uh, characters across 25 characters down so 40 times 25, we already know that it's 1000. So this, if this was a, a screen in my game, a level, a room, whatever, if this was a level in my game, 
then it would take this level would take up 1000 bytes. So for every level it will take up 1000 bytes. So 10 levels would be 10,000 bytes. That's a lot of space and it wouldn't give you a lot of um, a lot of space for, for many levels. So uh, you could of course make it a little bit smaller like um, 32 for example <coughs> if you don't want to use this one and the size would be smaller of course but it's still pretty big 32 let's see 32 times 25 it we're still talking 800 bytes so it's it's a lot <coughs> now if i say use tile set yes and i say i want tiles to be two characters by two characters all right and i say yeah we already have 16 tiles with her and 12 tiles uh, height so instead of a thousand bytes or 800 bytes what do i have now 16 times 12. so if i say 16 times 12 we're now talking 192 bytes for this level so it's it's uh, quite a reduction so uh, because now what we're saving actually saving in our file when we export this is what um, tile number do we have here what tile number here tile number tile number tile number so it goes on like that continues down here and so on all across here and that's the way it's stored but by storing what tile number and what tile number what are tile numbers well it's the tiles that we have up here 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on so charpad saves what tiles we have here now for the other um, what we looked at just a second ago when we didn't have tiles when we were drawing with characters then that's going to save what uh, uh, screen code uh, to use for every one of these so since we have so many more uh, squares tiles whatever we want to call them here we have uh, tiles so we do just have 16 times 12 and we have characters we have 14 times 25 so it's a simple it's simple math really so using tiles will take up less space but of course uh, you won't get um, you can't just choose one character and start drawing uh, your level with one character for example you could do that if you were not using tiles so here for example I could choose this character and start drawing with that so anyway that's charpad <coughs> uh, we already seen what I do to set up my my charpad file there and for sprite pad we actually seen uh, what I do there as well but um, so a quick reminder I just set up how many sprite uh, graphics I need here I chose 80 because I've done the math right and I know about this multicolor one multicolor two thing so my point was that those files are stored here into charpad files sprite pad files and oh, I also like to do that very early in my project so because I have um, because I have uh, set everything up I've done the planning it's easier to make these base files so even though a lot of these are empty right now they're still in place so I can just start filling in start filling in variable files I can start filling in graphics uh, once I get to tables I can start filling in tables stuff like that so I hope that makes sense um, so this whole video is just um, to show you how I usually get started so uh, because for me at least when I started uh, some years ago this whole thing just just getting started you know just where do I begin what should I do first oh, it's just you can drown before you even start doing anything how do you even start making the, the first file 
So this video was a little uh, just to show you how I do it when I start my project. And based on what we have looked before, hopefully uh, what I told you now would make sense. So this is how I get started. All right, so uh, this is it for this video and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.